everyone, it's Catherine with Freddy's at ABA, and we got a request to do a video on socially mediated reinforcement and automatic reinforcement, comparing the differences and providing some examples. So we're going to be doing that now. So first, when we look at these two terms, we want to do a refresher on what reinforcement is. So we know that reinforcement is anything that increases the likelihood of the behavior occurring again in the future. So since we know that reinforcement increases behavior, this is dissecting not only positive and negative, but more of the function base or the reason why these behaviors continue to occur. If we can pinpoint the function and we can figure out the why, we can make sure that we're providing reinforcement for the behaviors that are, are better. Um, and then also we can put in strategies to decrease or provide extinction to other behaviors that we want to get rid of. So I like to make this kind of an analogy. When you think of socially mediated reinforcement, the function that should come to mind is attention. So behaviors that are maintained by socially mediated reinforcement are behaviors that are attention seeking. A lot of these are great. And if there is a behavior that's attention seeking that is problematic or dangerous, we would want to make sure that whatever replacement behavior we suggest is followed up by attention. Otherwise, if the functions do not equal, then it's not going to be successful at all. Okay, and this video, of course, isn't making any direct recommendations, but in general, this is the guidelines that we want to follow. For example, if there's a middle school kid that will shout out cuss words in class to try to get the teacher's attention, this is, since it's not appropriate, we would want to provide a replacement behavior and say, okay, well, you can raise your hand or you can say the teacher's name instead, but we really want to avoid providing that social reinforcement to those behaviors. Now, this is really difficult in a classroom because socially mediated reinforcement isn't just from the teacher. It could be from other kids. A lot of times it is. So that class clown behavior, which a lot of times is fine, but if it is something like cussing or something dangerous, like throwing things across the room and there's reactions, provided by other kids, that's hard to control. So in that case, there's usually specific interventions or ways to try to intervene. But we want to look, if it's an attention-seeking behavior, we want to think, well, when are other times that this kid is getting appropriate attention? This is communication. This is really their way of saying, I need more attention. So how can we find other areas throughout their day to provide maybe one-on-one -on -one attention or group play, do more group lessons? to give the attention in other areas. So hopefully there's a little bit of satiation going on. We're satiating that need for attention so they feel fulfilled and they're not going to cuss to get attention in that way. With automatic reinforcement, the function that should come to mind is automatic reinforcement or sensory behaviors. And these are just behaviors that feel good. Nothing wrong with these. A lot of times we, we do things like scratching an itch People pick their nose, they'll tap pencils or twirl hair in a moment of thinking or sometimes when feeling anxious. These tools or these behaviors that we've learned to do are self-regulating in a way. And so really we don't mess with these hardly at all unless they're harmful or unless they significantly impair the ability to get basic needs met or go about the day or learn different things. But otherwise, you know, flapping, any of those visual stimming, those things are totally fine and really we should encourage as long as it's not like skin picking or things that leave marks or that are detrimental. But when we talk about behavior that is maintained by automatic reinforcement, this is also often a difficult one to intervene with because it's hard to compete with something that just feels good to the individual. So if there is an instance of uh, an inappropriate behavior like hands in pants in public for uh, an older teen. Since that is technically a sensory behavior, we don't want to discourage it, but maybe in, in my experience, there have been recommendations like time and a place, like, oh, let's do that in this area versus, you know, we don't want to draw attention or put extinction on that altogether, but we want to maybe just change the setting in which it's, it's occurring. So both of these types of reinforcement increase the likelihood of the behavior happening again and there are ways for us to try to intervene if like i said if the behaviors are dangerous or problematic as a whole hope this helps 
comment if you have any other recommendations or if you want to hear any other topics coming up. Be sure to check out our Instagram page as well for visuals and check out our website. Thank you.